Bedtime. Ow! Ow! I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a fairy princess, and she was called Hilary. Hilary worked in an office with a rubber plant and a man whose name she'd forgotten. And she lived with her mother and her mother's father, who was 76 and deaf, and who secretly ate dog food. Although it wasn't much of a secret. Hilary never really liked people. Her best friend was a mouse called Linda, a present from her father before he ran away to Bridlington with a woman from the post office on Hilary's fifth birthday. The day after Hilary's fifth birthday, great lumps of Linda's fur fell out and she died. So Hilary wrote to her father, and her father sent her a replacement. The new Linda had no fur at all, and if you wanted her to move, you had to wind her up. And even then, she had traction problems on carpet. But she was still Hilary's best friend, and she was still better than people. You can't trust people, said Hilary's mother. And Hilary agreed, and didn't trust her mother either. And at night, she lay in bed and dreamed of a life without people, a life far away with just her and Linda, a life on Mars. But being a practical sort, Hillary would always settle for two weeks in August at a boarding house on the East Coast, watching cliffs fall into the sea while her grandfather suffered prickly heat and various shellfish disagreed with her mother. And life was, on the whole, rather dull. You know your problem, said Hillary's grandfather, and Hillary ignored him because he was deaf and because he'd never listened to anyone even when he could hear. Your problem, said Hillary's grandfather, is you're boring. You don't do anything. I don't smell of dog food, said Hillary. When I was your age, said Hillary's grandfather, I lived life in the fast lane. And on he went about all the countries he'd been to, and all the men he'd had fights with, and all the women he'd slept with, and all the diseases he'd caught. And Hillary knew her life was not in the fast lane, nor for that matter, was it in the slow lane. Hillary's life was idling at a red light, with one eye on the petrol gauge, patiently waiting for the engine to stall. Until one day she met a man, and the next day she met him again. And the next day she didn't meet him, because her grandfather got knocked down on a zebra crossing, and there was all manner of commotion. But the day after that she met him, and by the end of the week she'd lost her appetite and started writing poetry of terrific poignancy and length. And at the end of the month he proposed, and she said yes, and took him home to meet her mother. And her mother was somewhat hostile. I thought I told you not to trust people, said Hillary's mother. You can't trust him. Look at him. He doesn't love you. He just wants someone to cook his tea and clean his dirty underpants. And the minute your bum starts to sag, he'll dump you like that for some teenage bimbo shop girl with bleached hair and pierced nipples. And what kind of job is playing the piano for a grown man? And who's going to look after your grandfather when he gets out of hospital? And Hillary said, I'm pregnant. After they were married, Hillary got fatter and fatter until she had a baby. It was relentlessly loud and clammy, but they kept it, and it grew up into a little girl. And together, they were a family. And they lived in a house which Hillary said wasn't big enough. So Hillary's husband built an extension. And Hillary said it still wasn't big enough, so her husband extended the extension. And Hillary said it still wasn't big enough. And her husband said it is big enough. And Hillary said it isn't. And her husband said why. And Hillary said I need more space. And her husband said what do you need more space for? You don't do anything. And Hillary started to cry. And her husband said sorry. And built another extension. And as the house grew, Hillary seemed to shrink. She stopped going outside, and sometimes she whispered very quietly what sounded like obscenities. 
But you could never be sure if it was just your imagination, because Hillary didn't speak much anymore. She didn't have any will of her own. So if her husband said dance, she danced. And if he didn't, she didn't. And although some days Hillary loved her family very much and they were just angels, other days they, they weren't. Were. They were strange and cruel and rude about her behind her back and to her face. And one day, while she was hiding from them at the bottom of a wardrobe, Hillary found Linda. And Linda said, I thought we were going to Mars. And Hillary looked at Linda, at her little plastic whiskers, and her painted on eyes. And she said, Oh, yes. <laughs>